Hi there. In this video, we are going to be demonstrating how to use Aurora to model a selectively optimized solar installation. We will be examining the Tygo TS4's ability to mitigate performance losses due to shade, and we will also examine the performance boost gained by optimizing modules placed in mixed orientations. By way of background, Aurora is a one-stop solution for solar sales, design, and engineering for the residential and commercial sector. Let's get started with our first example, where we will be focusing on the performance boost you get from the TS4's optimizer's ability to mitigate shade. I already created an address in Aurora, and now I'm going to place this green icon directly on the house for which we will be performing our solar design. Then I click on 2D, and this is the space in which I will start outlining our roof. I click and I place nodes on the key vertices of this building. Any place where two or more edges meet, I want to place a node. And that enables Aurora to create a 3D model and allow us to perform a lot of very detailed analysis on the site without ever having to travel there. Great. So very quickly, you can see that Aurora has already started to detect the various roof surfaces on this particular building. Next, I click on the Detect Roof Structure, and that runs an algorithm that will automatically identify the azimuths of each of these different roof surfaces, as are represented by these yellow arrows. Next, I'm going to add some of the obstructions on the roof. I'm going to add a chimney in this corner and I will add some of these pipe vents that we can see on the west-facing roof face. I'll now go and click on Detect Edge Types, and that runs another algorithm that automatically identifies the various edge types of this roof. For example, that's a hip, this is a ridge, etc., etc., and places the appropriate fire code setbacks for those particular roof edges. To finish this off, I'm going to draw some trees. To do so, I draw circles whose diameter approximately match the image that I can see on the map. And then we can edit its exact characteristics in 3D space. So within a minute or two, you can see that I have finished my 2D drawing, and now I'll click on 3D to go ahead and complete the 3D model. In 3D space, Aurora starts with an estimate of this particular building's characteristics. I click on Lift Roofs to apply slopes to the various roof surfaces that I outlined. We have a number of tools to help you make this as accurate as possible. The first one is the ability to pull up Street View. So if I split my screen as you see, I can instantly tell that this is a two-story building. So I'll click on the building and change it from one to two stories. I can walk down the street in Street View, and if I zoom in over here, I can see that this chimney needs some height, so I will go to our model, and correspondingly, I will change the height to about 5 feet tall. There are many other tools we have available, one of which is LiDAR data. If I click on the Download LiDAR button, that will generate a rich point cloud of this location, which contains 3D information, which I can then use to refine my site assessment. So there is the LiDAR data. What I will do is I will just center this directly on our house by adjusting the XY coordinates of this data set. That looks good to me. And now that I've done so, I will go back up here click on Lift Roofs, and you can see that Aurora will automatically change the slope and the height of the building to match up exactly with LiDAR. Now this is really important because we want as accurate as possible a remote site assessment in order for us to model the true benefits we get from the Tygo TS4. I'm also going to adjust the height of this tree to match up with what I see in the LiDAR data. Switch it from a sphere to more of a cone structure. And I can do the same for the trees in front over here. I'll select these two, 
and I will lower their heights to around 25 feet and change their crown diameters to around 20 feet or so. We can also adjust the settings to show metric measurements if that is important for the region in which you're operating. Okay, great. At this point, I feel very confident that we have an accurate remote site assessment, so I'll take away my LiDAR data. And I will just demonstrate some characteristics of this site. If I click on the toggle sun path icon over here, I can now simulate the sun's path for every daylight hour of the year and quickly visually examine what areas I can expect to get a lot of shading on this particular site. So for example, over here, you can see that this chimney is going to lead to a lot of concentrated shade in its surroundings. We don't have to worry too much about these trees in front. And the effects of the tree in the back aren't too bad. I'm going to click on the word designs. And let's start off with a regular string inverter design, which we can later modify and selectively optimize. To start off with, I click on toggle irradiance map over on the right. That goes through the process of simulating the sun's path for every daylight hour of the year and is going to generate a heat map for me where I can pull up the irradiance and solar axis values for every point on this particular roof surface. For those of you that are familiar with handheld devices, our shading analysis engine has actually been validated by NREL to be within 3% of traveling to the site and getting on top of the roof and measuring it. So it's extremely accurate. I am going to switch into expert user mode so that I can get more detail about the characteristics of this roof. So if I click over here, or I hover my mouse over here rather, I can see that around this area, our solar axis percentage falls dramatically due to the effects of having this obstruction, this pipe vent. I can see the same thing over here. This chimney is causing significant shading in its surroundings. The solar axis percentage drops to around 30%, whereas if I move towards the middle of this south-facing roof, you can see the solar axis percentage is closer to 97%. So this in general is a great roof, but this area is probably one in which I would want to deploy uh, uh, some TS4 optimizers to mitigate the effects of the concentrated shading. All right, so next we'll go ahead and place some modules on this roof. In Aurora, you have multiple ways of doing that. I am going to take away our irradiance map and turn on the satellite imagery to help us. I'll start off with clicking on Add Component and Fill with Modules. Let's select these uh, Trina modules, and I will place them in Portrait. Click on this roof surface, and you can see it fits as many modules as will fit on that roof surface. That's eight of them. On the west-facing roof, I will go ahead and actually elect to manually place modules instead of filling. And I will do two strings of eight modules each. And let's place that over here on the west side of the roof. Now, I will like to select an inverter. I'll go over to the right, click Add Component, select an inverter. And in this case, uh, I'll go with the first option, the Sunny Boy 7000 TL. And I'll place this down here. To finish this off, I'm going to string my modules. And you'll see that it lights up in red when you're outside the acceptable input voltage range of the inverter, and it turns green when you're within it. And then I am going to connect my strings to the inverter. Aurora is smart enough to know that it will automatically connect these two strings on the west side of the roof to one MPPT of this inverter and this string to the other MPPT of the inverter. And if I right click on the inverter, you can see that that's exactly what it did. Okay, I will go ahead and save this design. And now I am going to clone it And I will change the name of this new design and call it Selectively Optimized Design. And what I'm going to do in this case is I am going to select these two modules over here, right click on them, and select a DC optimizer. 
in this case the Tygo TS4. And the idea being that this is an area that experienced some pretty severe shading and by selectively optimizing those we can avoid them taking down this entire string. So what I'll do is I'm going to switch back to my regular string inverter design and I will click on simulations to run a performance simulation. Now just a quick word about Aurora's performance simulation engine. It's a module level performance simulation engine. We construct an equivalent circuit for each module in your design and we take into consideration how you connect them in series and in parallel and the characteristics of the inverter to run a full circuit simulation of the system. So now that I'm done with the regular string inverter design simulation, you can see that we generated 6.1 megawatt hours. I'll now switch to our selectively optimized design. There you are, the two modules optimized down there. Click on the word simulations, click on simulate, and wait for the results to appear. So in this case, you could see that we got 6.6 .6 megawatt hours, meaning that we were able to generate roughly around 7 or 8% more energy by simply selectively optimizing two modules in this entire array. Let's now examine a few other cases in which selective optimization might be useful. So if I click on 2D, you can see the side in front of you. I won't go through the process of outlining the roof surface again. You've already seen that. But basically, you can see that this is a fairly complicated site. Uh, the south-facing roof would probably be ideal for modules, but unfortunately, it is uh, rather small, which suggests that we would probably have to split any sort of array or design that we come up with across multiple roof surfaces. If I click on 3D, you can see more clearly exactly what I'm referring to. This roof surface looks to be getting a lot of great irradiance, but we will likely have to split our array over these two roof surfaces. So let's go to the design and let's start off with a regular string design over here. So in here you can see I once again have a total of 24 modules. Uh, we have six of them placed on this south facing roof and we have 18 of them on this west facing roof. The issue with this design is that we want to take advantage of the really strong irradiance on this south facing roof. However, we end up stringing in series all these modules on the west facing roof which have lower irradiance and so that's basically dragging the entire string down. If I go look at a quick performance simulation of this particular site, you can see that under these conditions we were able to generate eight and a half megawatt hours for this particular site. If I switch over to a selectively optimized design, you can see that I placed the TS4 optimizers on these modules on the west side of the roof, and by doing so, I essentially mitigate the effects of placing modules on mixed orientations. If I click on my simulations, you can see that once again I get a performance output boost of around 700 kilowatt hours a year. And that equates to roughly, again, 7 or 8% uh, performance boost for this particular site. Let's go ahead and look at an example which combines two of them. So once again, let's take a look at the characteristics of this site. You can see that this one is especially complex. Uh, we have a nice big house, but unfortunately we don't have uh, one nice contiguous roof area on which we can place all the modules. This roof looks like it has some potential but unfortunately there are trees over on the right side which will probably lead to a lot of shading. We also have uh, a chimney over here which will lead to shading in its surroundings and generally a lot of these roofs are broken up and are in different orientations and it's likely we will have to span the entire roof to offset the energy consumption of a house of this nature. If I click on designs, I'll go ahead and start off with the regular string design. And what you can see is that once again we have 24 modules, which is a 6.2 kW system. Once again, I've placed modules on this nice south facing roof, which has plenty of irradiance. But I've also been forced to place modules over here on this east facing roof, which suffers from shading from trees and generally has lower irradiance. On this east facing roof over here, which has uh, some of the same problems. 
but also this concentrated shading area. This chimney is causing some shading in its surroundings. However, given the characteristics of this roof, I was forced to place some modules over there as well. If I click on 3D visualization so that you can see this a little bit more clearly, I can zoom into the site and I will go ahead and look at this particular area and once again simulate the sun's path for different daylight hours of the year. And what you'll be able to see is how much shading is caused, particularly during the winter months, by this chimney in this particular area. So we want to do everything we can to mitigate the effects of that and avoid these particular modules dragging down the performance of our entire stream. So let's go back to the layout over here. And let me go ahead and look at the results of our performance simulation. And you can see that we got 6.8 megawatt hours for this particular site. Let me start off and take a look at placing some TS4s on this east-facing roof surface, this one with the lower irradiance. And we can see what the performance simulation number was. It jumped from 6.8 to 7.9. So at this point, we're looking at over 10% boost in energy performance due to selectively optimizing around seven or eight modules. If I take a look at selectively optimizing the area that suffers from concentrated shading over here and the modules that are placed on the east side of this particular roof surface, and I click on my simulations again, you can see that once again we get a significant performance boost. Regular string inverters had a 6.8 megawatt hour performance, and this is all the way up to 9.6 megawatt hour. If I combine both of them together, meaning that I selectively optimize not only the regions that have concentrated shading on them, but I also optimize this east facing roof face where the modules are in a different orientation and where the modules may be suffering from some shading from these trees. And if I run my performance simulation, I can see that my energy output jumps from 6.8 megawatt hours all the way to 10.7 megawatt hours. Now, I wouldn't say that this is a typical example, but the intuition here is that essentially you had the perfect storm of characteristics which speak to the strengths of selective optimization. You had concentrated shading for these modules in this corner. You had mixed orientation. You had lower irradiance on the east facing roof surfaces. So by selectively optimizing roughly half of the modules on this particular array, I was able to get a 55% performance boost. Here is a slide summarizing all the results we examined over the course of this video. Thank you for watching and if you'd like more information, go to www.aurorasolar.com to see the energy performance simulation for your site or feel free to contact your Tygo representative for more information.